Waxhaw, North Carolina, a charming, quiet southern town, perhaps best known to non-residents for its antique shops. But Waxhaw is more. It's home base for an organization that touches some of the world's most primitive cultures. The organization is called JARS, short for Jungle Aviation and Radio Service. It is the flying branch of Wycliffe, a worldwide missionary organization. For the past 35 years, JARS pilots have been charged with delivering missionaries to remote areas in countries such as New Zealand, Australia, Mexico, and throughout South America and Africa. The missionary's job is to work with primitive people who have their own tribal language which they speak but cannot write. The missionary creates an alphabet for these people in their own tongue, helps in health areas, and translates the Bible. The JARS pilot's job? Transport the missionaries to the tribes which are often located in some of the world's most difficult terrain. For Tom Hudson, a day at the office means flying over the Amazon basin. One of the unique things about this type of flying is you're, you're sort of out on the, the cutting edge. You're doing new things that perhaps other people have not done. And the challenge is to find a, a safe way but yet do it effectively. Tom is a native of Burlington, North Carolina. He's been a JARS pilot for the past 10 years. Along with his wife and family, Tom lives at the JARS Center in Bolivia, South America. If this looks like a typical American family scene, you should know the JARS Center here, though comfortable, is nothing more than a strip of land surrounded by jungle. The JARS pilots and the missionaries they fly are as cut off from civilization as you can get. No phones, no TV or radio, no movies. The generator for electricity stops at 10 p.m. There is no hot water. The children attend school at the center. Punk rock, Johnny Carson monologues, and Baskin Robbins' newest flavor pass unnoticed here, replaced by a love of flying and a religious dedication. Well, I've always been interested ever since I was very young in flying. I wanted to fly, and uh, I wanted to, uh, to do something like this. I've been interested in missionary work also. And so when I heard, I was about 12 years old when I first heard about missionary aviation. And I remember thinking, even at that time, that's really something I would like to do. This South American outpost is similar to others JARS operates around the world. The only link to the United States is through radio to here in Waxhaw, JARS worldwide headquarters. In Waxhaw, communications are kept up. Technicians rebuild equipment destined for overseas service. And because JARS flies in such hostile environments, special training is conducted here. Waxhaw is home to a school for missionary jungle aviation. I think people still see a missionary frequently as as a little lady with a bun on the back of her head, you know, maybe passing out literature on the corner. Mm -hmm. I think many people don't understand that missionaries can do what I've done, fly airplanes. Bob Griffin, a veteran JARS pilot, has flown in jungles throughout the world. He is now stationed in Waxhaw. Bob explains how through JARS, missionaries can now reach people in previously inaccessible areas. We provide the transport and the communications to enable the missionaries to get from here to there across mountains that there, where there are no roads, no tracks. We calculate that one minute in the air will normally equal about seven to eight hours on the surface. And who are these pilots who want to spend their lives flying the jungle? They come from around America and the world. And like trainee Ken Matthews of New Zealand, they share a common motivation. The appeal came, well not from a human point of view, but the fact that I needed to see the word of God spread around the world and, and the skill that I had as a helicopter pilot could speed this work and enable it to get done um, in parts of the world where it was almost impossible without the aid of helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. The course they take in Waxhaw runs three months. These men are already accomplished pilots. What they learn here are the skills a jungle pilot must have. Situation. A missionary living in a jungle village needs food or medical supplies, but there is nowhere to land. The JARS pilot learns to airdrop. Situation. A plane has a mechanical problem in the middle of nowhere. The JARS pilot becomes mechanic. He must know how to fly them and fix them. 
situation. The landing space in a jungle or mountain area is short. JARS pilots are trained to take off and land in a fraction of the normal space. What kind of pilots are JARS pilots? They are the best. They have to be. We fly in very hostile environments, and so they have to be really top-notch. They are also not given a salary. JARS people must pay their own way. Most are supported by individual churches throughout this country and abroad, as is the organization itself. The aircraft frequently are gifts from individuals, some new, some used. Regardless of condition, the technicians at the Waxhaw headquarters are world famous for giving any aircraft new life. We would sooner fly behind an engine that one of our men have overhauled here in our shop than I would behind one that comes right out of the uh, factory. They know that the men that fly those engines are going to fly over terrain where if it quits, there's no place to go. Pilots in general have always seemed a breed apart, those of us who prefer to keep our feet as close to the ground as possible. Missionary pilots seem even harder to understand. Why would anyone trade the comforts of the American lifestyle for a remote outpost in a foreign country? Answers come quickly from the veteran pilot now home. We go as servants. And we, we kind of follow the, what Christ said when he said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve, to be a servant. From the pilot still in the jungle. It's been good. We've enjoyed working here, and there is a great deal of satisfaction. I think we've been able to have a little part in helping some, some very needy people. And there's a sense of fulfillment in that. And from the trainee, soon to be stationed. Where would you like to be stationed if you had the choice? I don't think I can really answer that question. I'll, you know, I'll go where the Lord wants me to serve.